So children, uh, yesterday we began with a beautiful story, Footprints Without Feet by H.G. Wells. And today we are doing the rest part of the story. Yesterday we read that uh, a brilliant scientist had made himself invisible and the boys could see the footprints without his feet. The man appeared, the invisible man Griffin appeared to be just like glass, solid but transparent. And uh, the writer says that he had to do lot of adventures uh, because he had to stay in the society and uh, to make himself uh, visible he went first to the London store to collect the things from there to get the comfort of the clothes and food and uh, leisure and sleep and many other things and then when he wanted to get uh, take the clothes with him he was not able to and so he went to the Drury Lane where he attacked the man from behind the shopkeeper from behind and took the clothes and money of him now let's see what does he do next uh, we are on page number 28 children. Eager to get away from the crowded London, he took a train to the village of Epping, where he booked two rooms at the local inn. The name of this inn uh, in the story, children, is Coach and Horses Inn and the innkeeper was Mr. and Mrs. Hall. The arrival of a stranger at the inn in the winter was in any case an unusual event. Because uh, uh, during the snowfall, nobody came as a guest. A stranger of such uncommon appearance set all tongues wagging. Everybody in, the, in Iping started to talk about the stranger because of his unusual appearance. We have already read yesterday that what kind of appearance he had. He had put a fake nose and, uh, and the side whiskers and covered the complete head with the bandages and all about so uh, everybody started to talk. Mrs. Hall, the landlord's wife, made very every effort to be friendly. To friendly, but uh, Griffin had no desire to talk and told her, "My reason for coming to Epping is a desire for solitude. I do not wish to be disturbed in my work. Besides, an accident has affected my face." So he made himself clear that he wanted silence and loneliness because he was a scientist and he was busy with the research work and uh, he met with an accident and because of that he had covered his face with the bandages and uh, this woman Mrs. Hall was already greedy and as he was no longer a haggler like uh, he was giving money Griffin was giving money to her the money you remember he had stolen from uh, the hunched back man's uh, house the shopkeeper so that money he had given to mrs hall and therefore mrs hall allowed to stay with uh, or mrs hall allowed him to stay with them satisfied that her guest was an eccentric scientist and view of the fact that he had paid her in advance mrs hall was prepared to excuse his strange habits and irritable temper only for the money but the stolen money did not last long and presently Griffin had to admit that he had no more, he had no more ready cash. He pretended, he just showed, however, that he was expecting a check to arrive at any moment. So he told Mrs. Hall because the money that he had stolen that he was using for not only paying to Mrs. Hall uh, for staying at Coach and Horses Inn, but he was using it for completing his research work and his experiment as well. Children, he wanted to become visible again and for that only he was performing the experiment and for that also he needed money. So now when his money got over, he promised Mrs. Hall that he will be getting in a few days the check and he will be paying to Mrs. Hall the money. Shortly afterwards, a curious episode occurred. Very early in the morning, a clergyman and his wife were awakened by noises in the study. Creeping downstairs, they heard the chink of money being taken from the clergyman's desk. Without making any noise and with the poker grasped firmly in his hand, 
the clergyman flung open the door surrender so while the clergyman mr and mrs bunting they were sleeping in their bed they could hear from the next room the sound of the money being taken out from the drawer poker children is a, a handy equipment that is used for uh, uh, moving the wood in the fire so it is an uh, it is made out of iron and uh, it's a little heavy also so they thought that there was a thief and they took the poker and went into the next room to find out the thief but as soon as they lit the room they found now let's see what did they find then to his amazement he realized that the room appeared to be empty he and his wife looked under the desk and behind the curtain and even up the chimney there wasn't a sign of anybody yet the desk had been opened and the housekeeping money was missing they could not believe their eyes that there was nobody there but in the drawer there was no money also nobody and no money it means there was somebody but that somebody could they could not see and he had taken the money from the drawer extraordinary affair the clergyman kept saying for the rest of the day but it was not as extraordinary as the behavior of mrs hall's furniture a little later that that morning now let's see children what kind of extraordinary things mrs hall find in her inn the landlord and his wife were up very early and were surprised to see the scientist door wide open usually it was shut and locked and he was furious if anyone entered his room the opportunity seemed to good to be missed because he never allowed mr or mrs hall to get inside the room so when he he was absent from the room they thought of getting inside the room to find out what actually he was busy with inside they peeped round the door saw nobody and decided to investigate the bed clothes were cold showing that scientist must have been up for some time and stranger still the clothes and bandages that he always wore were lying about the room so the bed the bed was cold it suggested that the man had gone quite a some time and then the things that he used to wear they were all lying spread about in the room all of a sudden mrs hall heard a sniff close to her ear but she could not see anybody because the readers know that he was an invisible man a moment later the hat on the bed post leaped up and dashed itself into her face then the bedroom chair became alive springing into the air it charged it charged straight at her legs foremost as she and her husband turned away in the terror the extraordinary chair pushed them both out of the room and then appeared to slam and lock the door after them now imagine the furniture went mad it was hanging and dancing in the air not only this but the furniture pushed them pushed them both outside the room and the door was slammed on their faces mrs hall almost fell down the stairs in hysterics she started to scream she was convinced that the room was haunted by spirits and that the stranger had somehow caused these to enter into her furniture now mrs hall was sure that this man had put some spirit into her furniture and therefore the furniture became mad and pushed them outside from their own room of their own in my poor mother used to sit in that chair she moaned she cried to think it should rise up against me now now she could not imagine that that furniture had turned mad like this the feeling among the neighbors was that the trouble was caused by witchcraft now people started to think that this stranger this man knew some magic because uh, these people children they were innocent villagers of ipping and they ne- they could never imagine that these kind of things can happen that somebody can become invisible like this or do like this but witchcraft or not 
when news of the burglary at the clergyman's home became known the strange scientist was strongly suspected of having had a hand in it suspicion grew even stronger when he suddenly produced some ready cash remember he had uh, promised mrs hall that he would give the check but he said that he is giving cash now though he had admitted not long before that he had no money before earlier he said that he was not having money and now when he was giving cash so two and two were put together the burglary at clergyman's house and giving of the money of the stranger to mrs hall the a village constable was secretly sent for they called the constable instead of waiting for the constable mrs hall went to the scientist who had somehow mysteriously appeared from his empty bedroom i want to know what you have been doing to my chair upstairs she demanded and i want to know how it is you come out of an empty room when mr and mrs hall had gone into the room there was nobody and now from the empty room when the stranger appears griffin appears then it is a question mark for them and how you entered a locked room when the door was locked how did you enter because there is only one door for entry and exit to the room so when the door was locked how did you enter so that was not understood by mr and mrs hall and therefore they wanted to find it and so she went to ask him straight the scientist was always quick tempered now he became furious he became very angry when she asked him this manner i don't understand who or what i am he shouted very well i will show you suddenly he threw off bandages whiskers spectacles and even nose it took him only a minute to do this the horrified people in the bar found themselves staring at the headless man now when he removed all the things all the covering of his head his head became invisible so everybody was afraid mr jaffers the constable now arrived and was quite surprised to find that he had to arrest a man without a head but jaffers was not easily prevented from doing his duty if a magistrate's warrant ordered a person's arrest then at that then that person had to be arrested with or without his head so the constable uh, he also saw the headless man in front of him but he said that he was commanded he was ordered by the magistrate to catch to arrest the man now whether the man was having the head or not having the head he was an head he was a headless man it did not worry him there followed a remarkable scene as the policeman tried to get hold of a man who was becoming more and more invisible as he threw off one garment after another so it became difficult for the constable to catch him because gradually griffin was becoming invisible by removing his clothes finally a shirt flew into the air finally a shirt flew into the air and constable found himself struggling with someone he could not see at all some people tried to help him but found themselves hit by blows that seemed to come from nowhere in the end jaffers was knocked unconscious as he made a last attempt to hold on to the unseen scientist there were nervous excited cries of hold him but this was easier said than done griffin had shaken himself free and no one knew where to lay hands on him so again he became invisible uh, and he removed his clothes and escaped and became a free man and children if you want to know more about this great brilliant scientist you can read the invisible man by h g wells the novel that tells you how did this brilliant scientist meet his tragic end only because he was lawless